And so this is now being recorded. This is recorded. This is Google's season of docs office hours, the 14th of September. Thanks for joining us. And you should right now see a, a mostly dark screen that now has a copy of the doc on it. Yep. Great. Good. And you're all welcome to edit in the document at the same time that I'm editing. I just put it on the screen so we can see it. Got it. <laughs> uh, no worries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. All right. So items I had put on the agenda, pull request status, knowledge sharing sessions, cluster access. Are there other things that need to go on the agenda? I sent an email uh, about my participation. I didn't oh, right. get a response from anyone. So I wanted to discuss it here. Excellent. Let's do that. The box for the blog post. I see. Got it. Okay. Hello, all. Sorry for being tardy. The meeting ran over. That's great. Hope you're feeling better. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So um, let's see. So we've got, we added OLEX availability as a topic, knowledge sharing sessions. Uh, we've got the Katakota session scheduled with Marky, cluster access. I've got a topic to report. Any other topics we should add to the agenda? Well, uh, probably implementation status, next steps. So just uh, to have a uh, regular sync up on uh, what's going on and uh, what needs to be done. Great. So, and so we should probably put, yeah, this implementation status is a good place to put a review of the outline, uh, content, creation, et cetera. Good, anything else? Oh, oh we did have one on the pull request. It was uh, doc structure or no, not doc structure, it was project structure, PR, shall we, alt slash, stay with what we have. Because right, I think that was one of the comments you provided in the pull request, Oleg. So pull requests, yeah. shall we take that one first then? Let's get started. So. Zenab, you want to take the lead there? Let's see, we can talk to pull requests here. Yeah, I'll put the link. This way. Okay. Um, okay. Hello everyone. So, um, I think two, two meetings ago or so, um, I and Mikey and Mark rather had a discussion about um, GSOD project page. So, um, I raised the concern that um, the current uh, directory where the GSOD project page is, is not um, really easy to navigate to unlike that of GSOP. So um, on Jenkins.io, if you go to Jenkins.io, so on that sub project, so on, uh, yeah, so on that sub project, we have um, Google Summer of Code, but um, GSOD, I think is somewhere on the, um, 
documentation also, I think. Right, so it's two or three levels deep. Exactly. Well, it's so just one more. level. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. So that was why we had the suggestion of creating um, GSOD also on that sub project, just as um, GSOC, and copy and move the context rather. So um, the idea was to do a redirect. So I, I've corrected the pull request. Why I didn't remove the content from the previous directory was because I know um, GSOD project page on Google Season of Docs sites is carrying the link to the previous directory. So if I remove it completely, it means um, Jenkins project link will be broken on GSOD sites, Google Season of Docs sites rather. So that was why I didn't remove it totally from the previous directory. But um, Oleg mentioned some things on the pull request. So I'm guessing probably we might not go along with that anymore, or I don't know. Well, uh, uh, there are multiple uh, comments. I'm requesting changes, mostly because there is a content duplication. And instead of that, uh, there should be redirects and the change history should be preserved. Uh, this is why I request a change uh, if we do this modification. At the same time, I question uh, the feasibility of modification on its own. Uh, because yeah, even if it re removes one level for navigation, uh, I do not see clear benefits of moving. And at the same time, yeah, this uh, the current structure is what we agreed with other GSOT org admins uh, in May when we were preparing the application, etc. And moving uh, content now is well, it's a bit complicated. It's possible, uh, but yeah, for me, I just don't understand what is. Uh, the need to move it. So, oh, like if we were to, is there a way we could make this page that's visible on my screen now directly accessible from either the community menu or the sub projects menu so that instead of doing three levels, you know, three clicks of navigation to find it, we could get there from a single, a single pick from the top level menus? Mm, yes, you can. And moreover, so uh, what we were discussing for a while is uh, actually uh, reworking the structure, so replacing sub projects, uh, seeks, etc., by let's say working groups, where we would have uh, everything aggregated and where we would have only active projects uh, or seeks or working groups. Um, and after that, uh, it would be addressed uh, by design. So right now, uh, the structure of navigation bars, at least for me, is temporary. Assuming that I ever find uh, time to rework that, I would rework that. And that's uh, why when we discussed getting additional sub-projects uh, recently, I voted against that. And yeah, for this purpose, yeah, I do not mind uh, adding a sub-project to there. Uh, but uh, yeah, at the same time, I'm not uh, sure what they it's justified, but we could do that. So, so just thinking towards a, a simple, if a sub project were added to this list, Google season of docs right below Google summer of code or right above it, um, mm -hmm. that would fit your, con that would address your concerns. It would address my concerns that I want this page reachable from without having to navigate three, three pages to get to it. Uh, Mm, yeah, you can add it uh, to this uh, menu bar. Okay. So this menu bar is uh, auto-generated, if I recall correctly, but similarly to overview link, you can add additional link to the bottom of the list. Okay, all right. Um, Zinab, would that, would that be acceptable to you if we just ex took the, the idea of let's put one entry in this sub projects drop down menu that links to this exact page and not change the location of the page at all. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get that. My apologies, my internet is, is imperfect at best. Oleg, would you like to describe it so that we don't have to put up with my poor internet? 
Okay, uh, so yeah, what Mark suggests that instead of uh, moving pages, uh, okay. we just add a, a link directly to your project uh, in the sub-projects list. Okay, okay. Okay, that's fine. I mean, that, that would also match the how it's being done for summer of code, which makes sense to me. Well, no, there is some difference because uh, Google Summer of Code has been created a while ago and it's basically a continuous project. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, yeah, one of the concerns about working groups, continuous projects was that uh, half of these projects are not really active. So, for example, mm -hmm. Evergreen is not active, uh, Jenkins Remote, and yeah, it might be a project, but uh, there is no really community events around it. Uh, ever, um, and yeah, the idea was to actually uh, start merging the things. Uh, yeah, and uh, it hasn't happened yet. So for now, it's uh, rather a plan to do eventually. So yeah, if you just want to put it there, we can do that. Um, it's just not the final state. And I think that final state of this uh, navigation bar should just change. Sure. Uh -huh. So, Zina, forgive my poor internet. Was that a better explanation for you? Did, was that comfortable? Yes, yes, it was. And are you okay with that as the idea then is one entry added to sub projects here that go navigates to this page? Uh, or maybe or should it navigate on, on Kubernetes? Maybe ah, you would have it. I see. Okay. Because that way it's a link to the current project, not to the general concept of okay, so that would mean it, here it would, would be called document or Jenkins on Kubernetes. Mm, yes, yeah, something like that. Okay, let me see if I can capture that. All right, so. something like that. Okay, workable work is that workable for you, Zinab? And Oleg, does that meet the meet the the idea you've got as a short term so that we don't do things big that we later long term have to undo anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's Okay. Should we go on to the blog post then? And let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is the draft, right, Zina? Yes, it is. Okay. It looks like you're getting feedback. Good. Okay. So then next stop is a, uh, a pull request to the Jenkins.io site, or is there next step, or is there something else? 
Xenob, have you created a profile for yourself on the Jenkins.io site? Um, yes, I have. Yes, I had. I think I did that when I was creating the project page. Um, okay, so it confirm it exists. Okay, any, any other discussion needed on the blog post? So Zenap, you've got the, the next step to do the pull, basically process the review comments since Google Docs are the easy way to do that. Um, finalize in Google Doc. And then you can pull convert it to ASCII doc as a pull request. Yeah. Great. All right, Oleg, availability and participation. Let's see, and I should be able to bring up the email. Well, I can quickly summarize one while you're looking for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, the team selected uh, meetings at 5 p.m. UTC. And yeah, these meetings are not really possible for me on a regular basis. So that's why I bring up what would be the best way uh, to be involved. Um, well, just to seek alternate uh, time to somehow sync up with the net. Uh, or just doing anything asynchronously, or maybe just stepping down uh, to avoid confusion and misconnects. And I wanted to get feedback from the team. Uh, what would be your preference and expectation on that? Yeah, and for, for me, me, I can make myself available. Sorry? I was saying for, for me, I can make myself available for whatever time works best for Zenob and Oleg. Yeah, so the thing that uh, current time definitely works best for everyone except me. For me, yeah, basically the time which would work is either morning my time zone or sometime in the evening. Uh, but in the evening, uh, if you want to have uh, Mark, uh, Mark Christian on the call, it starts colliding with uh, our work meetings. And uh, basically it almost guarantees that it will be a continuous mess uh, with people being unable to join. So, in principle, the current time uh, should be much better than anything we could choose. Uh, um, but, yeah, that's uh, the problem. Yeah, and... So, my... I don't ask uh, to move uh, the current meetings. Uh, but, yeah, I want to find a way uh, to participate uh, if we can find a way or maybe just uh, to step down so that uh, I'm not an obstacle. I will still remain a stakeholder uh, popping up here and there, uh, but yeah, at least you won't need uh, to wait me for formal processes. Yeah, so Oleg, I would like to understand a little bit the difference you see between item one Mm -hmm. and item two. So it's the difference. I, I think we could get your inputs in either case, couldn't we? But in one, you're, 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 you stay as an official mentor and would join the meetings once every two weeks or so. Uh, so the problem that uh, being official mentor and joining uh, one meeting of four doesn't seem to be workable for me. Because it will naturally lead to misconnect. So for me, it's finding another way to communicate asynchronously somehow, plus meetings. And still, uh, I think there is a high risk of misconnect. Right. Because for example, I may say one thing, you at the meeting discuss other thing, then I don't read meeting notes, or we miss something. Um, and yeah, then uh, it may lead to confusion. 
for me, I would rather have a preference of uh, the entire team participating in meetings on a regular basis. So that we have meetings per night. Which, which for me lobbies that the second option you offered is probably the least likely to introduce miscommunication while still retaining your expertise as an org admin. My concern is if we don't have your expertise as an org admin, we will make mistakes that we could have avoided with your skills there. Well, there are not that much uh, to be done uh, for JSOT. So we need uh, to handle different uh, uh, payments issues. And uh, after uh, accept that, uh, just ensure that evaluations are submitted in time. So I wouldn't say that uh, being Condor I mean, uh, would be a massive partner for anyone. So, I can step yeah. uh, back into the org admin role. Mm -hmm. If that works yep. for everybody. And that would certainly work for me. That would be just great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, anyway, it will still uh, remain somewhere around the project. Uh, but yeah. So for work, I mean, uh, the most challenging part is actually ensuring uh, payments uh, to come somehow through Linux Foundation. Uh, and yeah, basically there are two answers. Firstly, uh, we are talking about something like five hundred dollars. So we can say that okay, we will uh, spend more time uh, than it actually was uh, to get this payment through, uh, or we just try to get this money in principle because we can uh, invest them in uh, a few of the community events. But yeah, this is the only challenging part. And so, so that organization payment that you're describing is to the Linux Foundation because we are because the Jenkins Project is a sponsoring organization. That's not the payment that's made to Zenob as the writer. Uh, so, yeah, payments uh, to Zenob are being uh, done by Google. Uh, our effort as an organization is not required there. So, got it. Okay, yeah, so this is one is just the uh, org stipends. Yeah, so this is this is the this is Google offering a stipend to the Jenkins project for being willing to be a, a mentoring organization for Google summer season of docs. Got it. Thank mm -hmm. you. I have knowledge of doing this from the Kubernetes community. So it, again, if, if you need me, I can step in and Great. and also okay. just from being an org admin for summer of code for Jenkins. Okay, now this, this means that I have now gone through all three scenarios as preferred. I initially started thinking that the first one was preferred, listening to Oleg's description, the second one became more, and now I'm thinking, Oleg, I think having, saying, hey, you don't have to be involved at all, but you are welcome to, may be the healthiest thing for us to do here. Yeah, I will uh, be involved still. Mark, you know my current situation at work, so yeah, it's hard to commit on anything. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, for administration, basically, I have no preference. If uh, you or Mark you want to handle that, of course, it's a relief for me because I still have uh, JSOC to handle. Mm -hmm. uh, and but yeah, it, again, it's not a huge deal on its own. So. I don't feel strongly about that. And if anyone wants to take the work admin role, I'm perfectly fine. Okay, and I, go, ahead. I, go ahead, Marky, sorry. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I interrupted you, Mark. I just said, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely step up to do it. Okay, so then uh, I suggest we proceed with option three. Um, though I will be still available synchronously if needed. Uh, I will uh, be happy to provide any expertise. So in JSOC, we have a technical advisor term. So we are welcome to apply it uh, there as well, but yeah. Uh, just uh, uh, to set expectation, I won't be available uh, to be joining meetings unless it's strictly required. Okay, so Oleg 
act as technical advisor and Mark, he becomes an org admin and continue as a mentor. Oh, like, can you just uh, send me the invite, the, the Google invite to the console for the org admin? Well, it's a bit more challenging. There is no, no console for G uh, but yeah, I'll uh, do the transfer. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay, great, excellent. Anything else on that topic? Not for me. Okay, onward to the knowledge sharing sessions topic then. So um, we identified a need for at least two knowledge sharing sessions, one for Katakoda and one for Helm. Uh, the Katakoda session, I set a Google or a Doodle dot com poll and we got agreement that um, 5 p.m. UTC this Thursday was a workable time for Marky and for uh, Zenob. So it's scheduled. Is that still workable for you, Marky? Is it still workable for you, Zenob? It is still workable yes, for me. And do either of you object if we record it? I do not object. I do not object. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay. I, I am intentionally not making it a community invitation thing because I assume the people who own Katakoda might say, hey, we'd like to be presenting it if, if it's going to be published and invite hundreds of people to it, etc. So, but recording it for reference seems like a reasonable thing. And if we decide we want to share it, we can afterwards. Uh, the next story is not as happy. Uh, Torsten Walter is on vacation right now. He's out of the office. He will return the 28th of September. My attempt to find a time that would work the 28th of September failed. So Zinab, I, would, I was wondering if you, I don't have to attend this Helm session. I was wondering if you would be willing to take the responsibility to create the doodle poll in you on your schedule to find a time that fits with Torsten's schedule. Okay, I'll do that. Great. Excellent. Okay, then that covers knowledge sharing. Are there other knowledge sharing sessions that we need that we have not put on the list? I will say for the Helm knowledge sharing, if uh, if we can't agree or find a time for it for Zenop, Zenop, let me know, and I will gladly do some session with you that we can record. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Anything else on knowledge sharing? Okay, cluster access, next topic. I haven't yet found a donor to contribute cluster access to it. Tim Jacome asked a question about, uh, could we just host it in the Jenkins Infra as a separate cluster? And I need to discuss that further. I don't understand the security implications of that. Uh, so that's my action item. Uh, discuss in infra team meeting tomorrow. For me, it's still not clear for what exactly do we need the cluster. Because yeah, last time I participated two weeks ago, we discussed that Minikube is basically enough uh, to get started. And uh, yeah, I just scrolled through the discussion notes. I didn't notice that it changed. Yeah, so I thought, for instance, that that topics like these were likely to require a, uh, an account on one of those, one or more of those clusters. So that was just the assumption. It's not blocking Xenop's work, as far as we can tell. She hasn't hasn't expressed any concern that she has to have it immediately. Mm -hmm. I've just been doing the exploration to try to, to be sure we've got it eventually. 
Mm -hmm. I think initially the initial work can be done locally. So she could use Minikube or uh, K3S or a kind cluster. And then if there is additional cluster access needed for GCP and AWS, I can donate for that. Good, okay. I would not like to host this in, in the Jenkins infra just because cost and uh, security, I think it would be, be easier to not have to worry about that. Good, good point, okay, thanks. I think that answers it then. I think we've got the solution for this. That's great, thank you. Okay, we had an updating the Google Summer of Docs doc page. Mark's action item. I'm not sure what I yep. missed on that one. It's uh, me. So when we had the first meeting for the project, we discussed the next steps. And yeah, I was just looking at uh, the JSOT page. And JSOT page uh, is still uh, refers to Jenkins as a project uh, participating in JSOT with a list of project ideas, etc. And I believe we agreed that uh, we need to park this data to archive it as we do for JSOT so that uh, we have a clean page. Got it. Okay. And also just uh, doing some housekeeping to highlight the status, etc. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that was one. And when Zinab and I had dis discussed in the recent meeting, I thought, okay, see if she could take that on. But it may be better for me to take it so that she can focus on the Kubernetes project specifically. I like that. Uh, yeah, uh, so I did not see action item in meeting notes. notes. My impression was, Mark, uh, that you would be working on that, but I might be wrong. Yeah, and that's, I think that's a very reasonable approach. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else on the Google CSV Docs page? Okay. Next step then, implementation status and next steps. So I think this is a place, Zinab, for us to start from yours and share with us where you're at, etc. Zinab, did we lose you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't know I was muted. Sorry. So um, I said um, I want to create the um, Jenkins on Kubernetes um, volume on Jenkins.io. So um, if you can please um, navigate to Jenkins.io. I have a couple of questions. Okay. So this, this is this the page that you were meaning? Yes. So okay. on that documentation, or so I'm I'm not sure I'm hearing you, Zina. Could you say that again? Uh, yeah, I said on that um documentation at the top documentation on that documentation section at the top documentation section. Oh, um, beside plugins, communities, or projects, yeah. Okay, so I assume this is where we are going to be adding Jenkins on Kubernetes, right? So I wanted to be sure what the new structure, where exactly 
um, Jenkins on Kubernetes is going to be like what the arrangement? So one thing to mention is that uh, this structure on the main UBAR uh, doesn't fully represent the actual structure of the documentation. So Mark, if you go to any page, I think here. Yeah. Um, so the actual structure is uh, available on the left. Um, so basically user handbook. And uh, if you go up, you can also find the sections. So the structure is actually here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had some discussions about how to update this structure as a part of the documentation revamp. But right now, it basically has two main sections. One is uh, user-focused uh, user sections. Uh, other part is administrator-focused uh, sections. But you may see that uh, they are um, uh, basically ordered uh, in a less than expected way. So for example, installing Jenkins administrator section, then using Jenkins pipeline, blow ocean, and managing Jenkins again administrator section. So what we were discussing at one of the first meetings about having uh, two parts, uh, um, uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes for users and for administrators. I'm not sure whether it's still a plan for the team, uh, but yeah, one of the ways is, would be to actually just have uh, two sections. Oh, just this uh, Jenkins and Kubernetes as a single entry. Yes. So, so for me, the so the, the the using Jenkins talks about details inside Jenkins. Installing feels like the uh, an, an unexpected location to find details about Kubernetes and yet possibly viable. I was assuming at the same level as system administration, there would be a heading here on the left, Jenkins Kubernetes, and that it would have all the Kubernetes related things in it. But Oleg, I think I see your point that may not be the best structure for for the a consumer, for a reader. Mm, well, my suggestion would be to actually start from something because should we decide to reorganize the content later, we can do that. So for example, now if the decision is to just have a separate single section for Kubernetes, we can do that. In the worst case, we will let it redirects after that um, when we do when we reorganize the content. Okay. But yeah, for now, uh, if you do not uh, prefer to have a single entry, uh, let's do that. If you want to somehow merge Kubernetes content into existing sections, again, it's doable. Well, uh, and this is one where thinking about Marky, you've probably got the most experience in terms of install. If Kubernetes were not, if Helm related information, for instance, were not in the installing Jenkins section, but rather were in a in the Kubernetes section, would that be confusing to you or helpful? I, I'm not sure which is better for someone who is Kubernetes experienced. I think in this section of installing Jenkins, it should break out into multiple other sections. For example, there would be a Helm in, uh, install section. There would be uh, you may use Terraform to do something. You may use uh, yeah. just you know, native. Okay, so you're, you're suggesting it would be clear to have the information in the installing section rather than in a separate dedicated section for Kubernetes. Okay. That's just, that's my, I, I definitely want Xenop to drive what she thinks and then we can go that route. But if I were to do this, I would say installing Jenkins would have subsections installing with Helm, installing with, you know, GCP or installing AKS or something like that. Okay. Well, like, uh, does that, does that still fit within, within the ideas you were working from? Oh. Uh, yes, it does. So for me, the main uh, objective is to have content. Uh, yeah, and once we have it, uh, we can uh, still move it if uh, later we ch uh, change our mind. So for now, I'm basically fine with any approach. Okay. 
So then, Zinab, I think it's back to you. If there were a section here, I think you were proposing add a section, uh, add a, a row to this menu that is Kubernetes, and it would jump yeah. to a place here. Yes, that was what I was thinking. Well, I think I I understand what Mikey was talking about, about had, adding a section on Helm to installing Jenkins. So, I think um, what I'm going to do is, there'll probably be a section, there'll still be a section dedicated for Jenkins on Kubernetes, but for topics that we have that properly fit into existing sections, we'll see how we can match them. Then for those that don't fit, they'll be under the Kubernetes section. Okay, so let me capture that. I, I like that. So Kubernetes section linked from the document B. Let's see, this is the documentation. Yes, the documentation menu. And then insert OK to insert content. existing sections like install. Good. Okay. Did I capture that accurately? Yes. Okay. All right. So there will be an that means there will be a a new Kubernetes section. the same level as system administration and installing. And, and that will be visible in the contents list and in the menu, drop down menu. Good, okay. Additional uh, topics that you want to discuss there, Zina. Um, not for now. Um, about sorry, I, there's something I want to mention about the knowledge sharing session. Sorry to take us back. Um, since Maki suggested that he's willing to take me on a session of on Helm if Tustin is not available, I don't know if it's possible for us to schedule that before the 28th, since Helm is one of the topics that I'll be covering in the beginning of the documentation. So I'm not sure if it will be if it don't cause delays, if we wait until 28 to have a session on Helm. Good that's question. If that's okay with Maki. That is totally fine with me. I can uh, give you a session and we can figure out a time that works best for you. We can do it this week, next week, whichever works. This week is fine by me. So okay, I will. Uh, I'll ping you. What What are you available? Or uh, what is your availability on Friday? Friday. Um, available. Um, let's see. Friday, Friday. Um, please. Are I'll have to check back and get back to you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Definitely ping me if you want and just to, in the docs channel. Yes, I will. Great. Excellent. Thank you.
examples. I think we've talked about rough top level, robot top level structure. Are there any things you wanted to discuss, Zinov, with regard to uh, more detailed structure as we talk, talked last time? Um, no, not yet. Hello, I think the um, I'm fine for now. I'll just go through um, what we have, the current con proposed content, and see how it can fit into either existing um, structure or the new Kubernetes structure. Great, OK. So, and do we do we want to do a review of your your ideas and comments in our next session? That yes. would be Thursday next session. I believe that's Thursday. Yes. Okay. Great. Any other topics we need to discuss in this meeting? So that nothing from me. All right. I, from me. Great. No, Thanks, everybody. I think that concludes our session. I will post a copy of the recording. Uh, it'll. It usually takes about an hour for that to happen. Thanks very much. Thank you all. Have a good day, evening. Thank night. you.